Is life about taking chances? We have heard that famous saying that life is about taking chances because we only live once. Is there actually a moral ground to that? The, the, the phrase we live only once, is there a moral fiber found there? Or is it just the anything goes attitude? Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. Okay, so as we were saying, is life about taking chances? If life is about taking chances, is there is still a moral compass involved. There is actually. What is it about life and that it is about what? Taking chances. How are we, I mean you and me and all of us here, how, how are we supposed to live anyway? Life is a grace given by God to unworthy human beings. Life is a result of God's righteousness and not of man's. Romans chapter 6 verse 23, what does it say here? But the gift, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Also in uh, chapter 1, also of Romans, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1. Let me uh, open the Bible there. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. True. For the fact that our Lord Jesus confirms this by saying that true life, lasting life, is only through Him. You won't find that kind of life anywhere, that, that true life, true lasting life. Let me refer to you what Jesus said here in the Gospel of John. That's in John 14, verse 6, where it says here, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, here Jesus confirms, confirmed, actually, that he is the only path, the only way, and that he is the only life, the only source of life. It suffice to say that to live means to live, to live in righteousness. For to walk with our Lord is to walk in righteousness. There is no other way of living except to live in righteousness. Now, if we say that life is about what taking chances because what we see around are people taking risks, some taking calculated risks, some taking risks like there is no tomorrow, come or, or the attitude of come what may. What I see now are people throwing away their moral compass and they live life regardless if they commit sin or not. What I see are people saying that that's how living is supposed to be. No wonder today's generation is so degenerative. When morality is stepped upon in the name of what? Of practicality and progress. Forward thinking, they say. When people start to live that way, let me remind you what was uh, written in the Gospel, especially in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. That's Luke 21. Verses 34 to 35. Be on your guard so that your minds are not dulled from carousing, drunkenness, and worries of life, or that 
they will come on you unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come on all who live on the face of the whole earth. Worries of life would always lead to what, practicality, or practicality overturning moral principles, if not kept in check. That is the trap here. That is the trap here. No one in this world is safe from that temptation. For it is written in uh, John 17. Let me turn the scriptures there. John 17 verse 15. I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. This is the Lord Jesus praying to Yahweh. Our Lord knows how important you and everyone are, or well, that includes me, to still have a part on, in this world. For Jesus himself said in Matthew 15, let me turn the scriptures, uh, Matthew 5, I mean. Let me turn the scriptures there in Matthew 5. That's in Matthew 5, verses 13 to 14. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's, not, it's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. It is part, it is part of us, being children of God, to encourage people to go back to God. And the only way, and the only way to do that is to still be part of this world we are we are called to be evangelists and catalysts for change a kingdom within a kingdom when our lord says his kingdom is not of this world and also teaches that the kingdom of heaven is at hand it shows jesus is actually preparing this world and consecrating it to the Father. Let's move on to, uh, let me share with you also the text in the Gospel of John, John 11. That's John chapter 11, verse 42. Where it says here, I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. Intentionally, Jesus would like to make people aware of God's glory and power at work in him, in Jesus. The way he is making all these miracles, in such a way we are being prepared by the Lord for the glory of Yahweh. In, in a manner of consecration, the miracles of Jesus is not just to flaunt. No, it is actually a preparation for the coming of the kingdom, where there will be no tears, no death, and everything will be made new, like how it is written in the book of Revelation, Revelation 21. Revelation 21 verse 1, let me turn the text there. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Also here, in Revelations 21, verses 3 to 4, I mean 3 to 5, Then I heard a loud voice from the throne, Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and He will live with them. They will be His peoples, and God Himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief 
crying and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. The imperfections of this world will disappear. That's what it says here, actually. The imperfections of this current world will disappear when Christ's consecration of this imperfect world to the Father, okay, the consecration makes this imperfect world perfect and made manifest with every miracle done. These miracles will make humanity clean and perfect, ripe for consecration, and thus be found worthy to receive the eternal kingdom of heaven with all its rewards, eternal life, and the joy of being with our Lord Jesus and God the Father. Now that is true life. The fact that we are still live that, that we still live in this imperfect and degenerative world is that we all have we still have a long way to go. Healing is still needed in the land, for God is still not with us, in a manner of speaking. Why? Because this world is so deeply engrossed in its own sinfulness. The immorality being legalized in the form of passing bills for the LGBTQ, for degrading life in the form of death penalty, idolizing money, making money as God in the form of pragmatism and practicality. Definitely, we still have a, a long way to go. Humanity chose to ignore God and, to, and they take pride in their own achievements, thinking he does not need God. A perfect example is King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I'm not sure if you still remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar, but if not, uh, I'd be happy to uh, turn the page for you. That's in the book of the prophet Daniel. That's Daniel chapter 4, verses 29 to 33. At the end of 12 months, as he was walking on the roof of the royal palace in Babylon, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, exclaimed, Is this not Babylon the Great, that I have built to be a royal residence by my vast power and for my majestic glory? While the crowds, while the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared that the kingdom has departed from you. You will be driven away from people to live with the wild animals, and you will feed on grass by cattle for seven periods of time until you acknowledge that the Most High is ruler over human kingdoms, and He gives them to anyone He wants. At that moment, the message against Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from the people, he ate grass like a cattle, and his body was drenched with dew from the sky, until his hair grew like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. By his own folly and arrogance, thinking everything is all him, he fell. This Nebuchadnezzar, he fell. He was humbled by the Almighty God, by taking everything away from him. In like manner, it will be for every person who thinks that everything they have are fruits of their own effort. Such hubris. Now, if we go back to the succeeding verses, we will know that it is only in accepting God's supreme sovereignty over our lives can we actually be able to fully experience the abundance 
that only God can provide. Verses 34 to 37, here, still in the chapter 4 of Dino. But the end of those days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven, and my sanity returned to me. Then I praised the Most High and honored and glorified Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and He does what He wants with the army of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can block his hand or say to him, What have you done? At that time my sanity returned to me, and my majesty and splendor returned to me for the, for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and my nobles sought me out. I was reestablished over my kingdom, and even more greatness came to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise exalt and glorify the king of the heavens because all his works are true and his ways are just he is able to humble those who walk in pride this actually makes me remember a song taken from the book of chronicles chapter 7 verses 13 to 14 if i shut if i shut the sky so there is no rain or if i command the grasshopper to consume the land or if I send pestilence on my people and my people who bear my name humble themselves pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways then I will hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land here is a step here is a step-by-step -step instruction from God on how to consecrate our land and be fully healed to newness of life. Number one, we need to humble ourselves. Number two, seek the Lord and pray to Him for guidance and strength. And number three, acknowledge our sinfulness before the Lord's presence and make a covenant of repentance and conversion. Then God will hear your plea. He will forgive you and only then true healing will happen. Spiritual healing through forgiveness and repentance is a prerequisite actually before the physical healing. You are not actually totally healed without being forgiven by God first. Lastly, live in humility. Acknowledge our imperfection and admit only through God can we truly be alive. Let us pray. Grant us wisdom through your gift of your spirit, Lord, because only through this we can see our incompleteness. Our, our arrogance binds us from our weaknesses, Lord, and may we walk in your way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we end today's episode of our live stream, Bible in Focus, uh, may we remind you that we are resuming our Bible exposition in the Archdiocese of Manila. We are resuming our face-to-face -face Bible exposition in the Archdiocese again. Um, it will be on Saturdays. We will be posting the details of the schedule on Saturdays, 1.30 to 3.30, and it will be in Pope Pius, United Nations, Manila. Now, if you're in our area, if you're in that area, please stop by and be a part of one of our um, exposition services, and we promise you that your life will change for the better. Now, and also, besides that, we, uh, we, we, we are happy to announce also that the ministry is open for membership. So if any one of you are interested to be a part of the ministry, 
being a member, contact us through the number that we will be providing at the, at the bottom of this video. And uh, again, once again, I would like to, to remind you guys, hopefully we could see each other in our Bible exposition in the Archdiocese of Manila. So keep safe. And uh, of course, if you have any spare, we, we encourage you also to support the mission that we are doing here in the ministry. Details on how to, to send your contributions. Would, would, your contributions will really help in for, for the ministry to go and preaching the gospel. Now, see you again in on Saturdays during our Bible exposition, and God bless.